One of the things that has been a big focus is our education system for this government, from cell phone bans in classrooms to attendance, action plans and bringing balance to the history curriculum. Now the focus has turned to the resurrection of charter schools. Associate Education Minister David Seymour announced today the upcoming budget will include $150 million for up to 50 charter schools, which in his words will help lift declining educational performance. The money will be set up to establish and operate up to 15 new charter schools and convert 35 state schools to charter schools by next year and into 2026. Vaughan Cullio is the president of the Secondary Principals Association and he joins us now. Vaughan, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you? I'm good, thank you um, for making time. I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Vaughan, but I'm sensing this is probably a move you don't agree with. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I've been asked what the, what the SPAN's opinion is on that and I, I just haven't caught up with any colleagues with regard to that and so, so don't know. So it's really a Vaughan opinion. And so That's for right. me, um, yeah, and so for me, uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't really stick last time and I realised legislation changed, but also when we're facing a, a period of time when uh, we're concerned about literacy and numeracy, we've got a whole change, a curriculum change coming about uh, mm. and we're part way through a qualification change. Um, is the answer to that creating a new type of school or doing better with the ones that we have got? Uh, and so I'm, I'm not sure charter schools are the answer. Uh, they, they certainly didn't do what it said on the box last time when they were around. Now, granted, there may be some changes to the way things are administered or whatever. And mm. I do know that um, places like Vanguard have lasted the test of time and Pacifico Advanced Academy, they've done a pretty good job too. Uh, but, but if it was so good, we would have all done it. You know, if we, if teachers and, and educationists are a little bit like farmers. If someone finds an amazing fertiliser that does a great job, all the farmers in that row have got it. Mm. Uh, and so... That, that hasn't happened. Um, and, and I realise it might look a little different this time and the devil is always in the detail and we don't Actually, have the yeah. detail yet. This is just a, this is just a budget announcement. Um, mm. But uh, look, in terms of principals across the country, there'll be, there'll be some of us, because it's a broad church, I can tell you, principalship, there'll be some of, uh, some of my colleagues who are incredibly excited about the opportunity that this brings okay. and there will be some that will be thinking that this is, um, this is cataclysmic. <laughs> so, for for those that aren't quite sure what a charter school does or how it operates, um, they are publicly financed but privately operated uh, by profits yeah. or businesses. And is, is that a concern? Because I, I have heard that some say, you know, education shouldn't be run by private business. What what would you say to that? There's some very successful private schools in the country, so I wouldn't necessarily uh, subscribe to that. So, mm. so the private school model can, does work in New Zealand uh, and I've, I've got a number of colleagues who, who run them and are doing great jobs uh, yeah. for their communities. However, I think, I think putting it, getting, it, getting it simply, when you look at um, a state school like mine, there yeah. are legislative things that I have to do. I'm required to deliver a curriculum. Uh, I have to operate within certain constraints uh, from particular pieces of legislation. Uh, funding doesn't necessarily come to me in terms of cash. Funding comes to me in terms of uh, certainly operational grant cash, but entitlements to staffing. So when I get um, a budget, for want of a better phrase, for my staffing and people I employ, it's not X number of million to cover salaries. It's uh, it's 100, at the moment, it's uh, 102.3 full-time teacher equivalents uh, and then that bill is picked up at central government level. So the key right. thing from a charter school's figure as I can see on the, right on the surface and really superficial is mm. rather than getting an entitlement for that, I get an amount of money for that. Uh, yeah. So think back to bulk funding back in, uh, back in the day, I think that was probably in the late 80s, early 90s I think, bulk funding. Uh, no, mid nineties, late nineties, good God, I'm getting old. Late nineties, <laughs> uh, where we had some, where we had some bulk funding. Uh, mm -hmm. And so rather than an entitlement, you got cash. And with that cash, cash is the ultimate voucher, isn't it? Where you can do whatever you like with it. Yeah. Uh, there, were, there, are, there are some loosening of uh, requirements in terms of charter schools around whether you have to be a fully trained teacher or, or, or not. You know, in, in most of our state schools, we want uh, registered and trained teachers. There are some exceptions with limited authority to teach. 
Mm. But on the surface of it, it looks like that doesn't apply in the charter space. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's some there's some legislative flexibility that's being applied to these. And and I would argue, um, why not just do that within your existing system? I suppose the counter argument would be, yeah, that's what they're saying. With charter school, uh, state schools can flip into a charter. Yeah. But that's interesting because if I decided with my school of 1,700 kids, that's a state school in urban Papatoitoi, uh, yeah. that has a zone and people are entitled to go to it, not allowed to, but entitled to because they live in my zone. What happens if I decide to flip to be a charter school, special character, and I only want to deal with uh, people that play football? Uh, that's my special character. I'm being flippant, but nonetheless, that's my special character. And yeah. so what happens to all of the other people that live in my zone? What's going to be what's going to be the requirement if a state school wants to flip into a charter school in yeah. terms of the entitlement for the person that lives on the street that that school is in that doesn't meet the special character characteristics of that charter school? 